Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a quest to become the world's greatest tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the product and quotient rules in calculus. This is one of the earliest shortcut rules for derivatives that you learn, probably right after the power rule. And product rule and quotient rule is all about multiplication and division. So first I'll give you the formula for the product rule. What most high school and college teachers in the country will do They'll say you have some function f of x times g of x. Now just so you know, this is just function notation. What this actually represents in a problem is something like this. It could be x plus 1 times 2x minus 4. Or it might even be something more complicated, like the square root of x times sine x. But basically all we're saying is that it's one rule times another rule. And when you have this, then the derivative and this is the notation for the derivative, d over dx. If you take the derivative, it will be f of x times g prime of x plus g of x times f prime of x. Technically, this is not the only way you can write it because the order really doesn't matter. You can write it as, for instance, g prime of x times f of x plus f prime of x times g of x. Or if you even really want to mix it up, you can switch the order and write g of x times f prime of x plus f of x times g prime of x. Any one of these versions will do. All you need to remember is that each function, f and g, need its turn of being the derivative. So for instance, it's f times g prime and then g times f prime. Each function had its turn to be the derivative. It's fair. And so because of that, the order doesn't matter. And as we will soon see with the quotient rule, the order will matter for the quotient rule because there's a minus sign in there. So now let's talk about the quotient rule, which the setup looks like this, f of x over g of x. And once again, it's any function divided by another function. So for instance, 2x squared plus 4 divided by x squared minus x plus 6. This would be quotient rule because it's something in the numerator and something in the denominator. And the derivative of the quotient rule follows this very specific pattern, g of x times f prime of x minus f of x times g prime of x, all divided by g of x quantity squared. And again, the order matters for this one. You cannot flip the order well, I mean, technically you can put the f prime before the g, that's okay. But what I'm saying is you can't put this part first because the minus sign means that that has to go second to keep it negative. And so now let's do some examples of the product rule and quotient rule. Here's the first one, 3x minus 5 divided by negative x plus 1. So obviously this is quotient rule. What I like to do is I like to write out my f of x and g of x and f prime and g prime, because it makes the problem a whole lot easier for us. So f of x is 3x minus 5. We said g of x is the denominator, negative x plus 1. And then for f prime, the derivative of 3x minus 5, I'm not going to explain this. I'm assuming you know this already. If you don't know, this is just a simple power rule, constant rule, or coefficient rule. But assuming you know this derivative, the derivative is just going to be 3. It's very easy. And then the derivative of negative x plus 1 is just going to be negative 1 because of that invisible 1 in front of the x right there. So if you mess that one up, it's okay. My students mess that up all the time. Just don't make that mistake again. And now I can just plug in the formula, especially now that I have all four parts. So the first thing I need is g of x, which is negative x plus 1. I'll erase that 1 there because that doesn't matter. Put that in parentheses because we're going to be multiplying the whole quantity by f prime, which is 3. And then minus f of x, which is quantity 3x minus 5, times g prime, which is negative 1. And then all divided by g of x squared. So that's going to be negative x plus 1 quantity squared. Now watch how I reduce this. And by the way, some teachers and professors let you leave it like this. But I'm going to simplify it just to show you what it looks like. First thing I'm doing is distributing the 3 to both terms there. So it's negative 3x plus 3. And then if you see here, this negative 
and this negative 1 is a double negative, meaning that that's just going to be plus quantity 3x minus 5. In other words, there's nothing to distribute. It's just going to be plus 3x minus 5. Numerator's good, and the denominator's going to be the quantity negative x plus 1 quantity squared. From every professor and teacher I've seen, you can keep the denominator the same. You don't have to rewrite that or FOIL it. And all you got to do is simplify the numerator because negative 3x plus 3x, those cancel, and 3 minus 5 is negative 2. So the final answer for the derivative is negative 2 divided by parentheses, negative x plus 1 squared, and there's our answer. So obviously a lot of steps, but once you have the quotient rule memorized, it's not that bad. Okay, here's another one that we can try. I'm going to say the original function f of x equals x squared times sine x. And again, I want the derivative, so I want f prime of x. So hopefully you realize this, that it's going to be a product rule for this one, because we have two rules being multiplied together, the x squared and the sine x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out my f of x is x squared and the g of x equals sine x and this is a little confusing I will admit because I just said f of x is x squared sine x and now I'm saying f of x is only the x squared and the reason why I'm writing this is because this f of x and g of x is for the product rule this f of x at the top is for the original function yes I know it's confusing personally I hate it too but I see teachers and professors do this all the time so I'll do it too even though I don't like it personally and then now I just got to find f prime and g prime. So f prime is a simple power rule. That's just going to be 2x. And then the derivative of sine x is just cosine x. That's just one you memorize. And remember, product rule is f times g prime plus g times f prime. In other words, my derivative is going to be x squared times cosine x plus sine x times 2x. And by the way, there are a few different ways you can write this. So for instance, let's just say hypothetically, you had 2x times sine x plus cosine x times x squared. This is the exact same thing. Both of these answers would be correct. And one is not better than the other. They're both perfectly correct. And that's it for that one. And now we're just going to look at two more today. The next one is I want the derivative of quantity 9x plus 1 times quantity x squared minus 4x. So go ahead, I want you to try and solve this on your own now, and when you're ready to see the solution, unpause the video. Okay, so the first thing I wanna say for this one is you may have noticed that technically, this doesn't have to be a product rule. Why not? Because technically what you can do is you can FOIL this out, and if you do that correctly, you'd get 9x cubed plus x squared minus 36x squared minus 4x and then you can combine like terms and do a series of power rules and you'll get the correct answer much faster than if you did the product rule and that's fine in general but for this video I want you to do the product rule so in other words don't do what I just did still do the product rule although on the test you can do whatever you want so what I would write is f of x is 9x plus 1 g of x is x squared minus 4x. The derivative of 9x plus 1 is just 9, and the derivative of x squared minus 4x is 2x minus 4. And now I just combine them. One thing I'll tell you is that there's many correct answers to this one, so I'm just going to write one of the correct answers down, and as long as you have something similar, it's probably okay. So f of x times g prime of x is going to look like this, plus g of x times f prime of x. And technically you can distribute and FOIL this out and simplify and combine like terms. But personally, I don't care if you do it that way or not. This is a perfectly fine answer, so I'm just going to leave it like this. And then the last one we're going to look at today is a quotient rule. Let's say I have 5x minus 4 over 2x squared. So once again, try and find the derivative of this using the quotient rule. And when you're ready to see the solution, unpause the video. Okay, so for this one, my f of x is the numerator, and my g of x is just the denominator. 
So then f prime of x is just five, and g prime of x, that derivative is gonna be four x. And remember the order for quotient rule. g of x f prime minus f times g prime. So then it's gonna be two x squared times five minus quantity five x minus four times four x. And that's all divided by g of x squared, so the quantity 2x squared squared. And some professors let you leave it like this, but I'm gonna simplify this one because I want to. So the first term, you can only multiply the two and the five together, making it 10x squared. For the second term, I can distribute that out, giving me, well, first let me put this in parentheses. 5x times 4x is 20x squared, and then minus 16x, close parentheses. And then all that's divided by 2x squared squared, now I said earlier that you can just leave it like that, which you still can, but this is the only time I would actually square it is when I don't have any pluses or minuses there. In other words, earlier the problem was negative x plus one squared. Because of the plus, I would not FOIL that. But since there's no pluses in the denominator for this problem, I am gonna simplify it. And simplifying is really easy, as long as you know how. You gotta square both things, so four, x to the fourth, two squared is four, x squared squared. That is two times two, by the way, not two plus two. I know it's the same result this time, but it's not always gonna be the same thing. And then finally, the only thing I can do is I can simplify the numerator by distributing the negative to both terms, and that would get me this. And then last, I can do 10x squared minus 20x squared, giving me negative 10x squared plus 16x over 4x to the fourth. And actually, I can keep simplifying here. Like for instance, everything, all three terms are divisible by 2x. So if I divide everything by 2x to cancel it out, that would get me another final answer of negative 5x plus eight divided by 2x squared. Which once again, all these steps are technically optional. But hey, look how nice this final answer is. Now don't end the video just yet because there's one more thing I wanna say about this problem. Let me just write it down one more time. Technically, we could have avoided quotient rule altogether if the first step you do is rewrite the problem by splitting up the fraction, which you can do whenever you have multiple terms in the numerator, and especially when it's a simple single term in the denominator, like two x squared, for instance. And the advantage of doing it this way is we can say five x divided by two x squared reduces to five over two x, and then minus two over x squared. And this derivative is much easier, especially if you remember that x is in the denominator can simply be rewritten as negative exponents. So in other words, if you recognize the fact that it can be rewritten like this, then the derivative is super easy. The derivative of this becomes negative five halves x to the negative second plus Four x to the negative third. I just did a simple power rule twice, and I know I did this pretty quickly. That's because this was not the focus of this video. The focus was just on quotient rule and product rule. But for those of you out there who are a little more advanced and you see this and it makes sense to you, then that's fine. You can do it this way as well, and it'll probably save you some time on the test. So that's everything I wanted to talk about in today's video. Thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.